Now we're just gonna disconnect. Now we're going to disconnect. Yeah. Hello everyone. Today we are working on a 1996 Lincoln Town Car. This is the Signature Series. Customer complaint. You could smell coolant and physically see coolant dripping on the ground down below. <laughs> so apparently it's leaking coolant. Fortunately, it's not burning in the engine, but unfortunately, we got a massive leak somewhere. Let's pop the hood and take a look and see what we've got. Now, I have already diagnosed a problem. A uh, customer brought this off camera, and I was able to quickly figure out what was going on. Originally, so I could tuck my head right over the engine bay, and I could just smell the coolant wafting uh, rising up from the engine. You could just get that strong... A glycol smell I'm like okay well how about some heater hoses for the heater core for the heater box and I'm like okay no those are fairly well intact they check out visually there was no water running down on the back side of the engine block I'm like okay uh, what else well <laughs> for the 4.6 owners you know may or may not know there is a third coolant hose underneath the manifold let me show you that there is the hose there is the hose clamp directly in the center of the screen. There is the, I think that's a three quarter inch hose. And as you can see right there, may or may not, it does have a split right there, right in the middle. <laughs> kind of hard to see. We'll see when we actually pull it out. And that is the engine valley. And it is completely saturated. You can actually almost see where the line streaking is coming from. That hose is popped. So we're gonna have to go ahead and replace it. <laughs> but in order to do that, the whole intake manifold needs to come off. So I will consider this video a success if it helps one person out. Or it entertains you guys in case no one needs help with this particular problem. <laughs> Sometimes we gotta work on the newer stuff to help pay bills for working on the older stuff. That's all right. The first thing we wanna do is get this thing up on ramps and drain the coolant system. Next thing would be to disconnect the fuel pump because we're going to be tapping into the fuel rail. We don't want any pressure spraying back at us. You can do that on this particular floor by undoing the cover for the fuel pump relay. Pull that out. Fuel pump relay is the middle relay. There we go. Now it shouldn't start, and when we crank it, the pressure will bleed down to zero. Disconnect your battery. This particular car has a quick disconnect because it has a parasitic draw that I may or may not look into and record for you guys. We'll have to wait and see on that. Next, we have to drain the cooling system. So we gotta take off all this plastic underskirting right quick and so we can get to the uh, radiator drain. Should be eight mils. And I'm getting sprayed with 40 degree water. Love it. One little pressing pin right here. There's also a just a little body clip here you need to pry apart. No biggie. Okay. Remove those two little bolts here and here. Right there, right there. Then you'll be able to drop your rearward plastic shroud and there is the drain off the 
driver's side. It's nice that they even give you a little tube here. So let's go ahead and drain some coolant now. This would be 19 millimeters. Huh. Doesn't want to come out of the tube, it wants to come out of the drain itself. Drain plug itself. <laughs> okay, well, um, There's something foobar going on there, but oh well. <laughs> well, your drain's supposed to work, but apparently this one's either plugged or something's going on. So we'll go ahead and uh, just give this the old drain and drainy. When it's done draining, I'll, I'll just simply screw it in, shut it all off, and meet you guys topside. Next, we're going to disconnect our fuel lines. Really? One potato. Two potato. Now, fancier fuel quick disconnect tools uh, for Ford, they actually make a nice metal version. <laughs> I have a wimpy plastic version, but I do have the removal tool in stock, so it'll work. I know there's a lot of videos out on this, but find the right size, push it into the inside collar, like that. And that relieves the spring tension. And grab this big metal piece and it should disconnect. Should. <laughs> this one's been on here a little while. Can't quite get up because I got a PVC hose here that's stuck. There you go. Remove your PC hose from your uh, valve cover first. <laughs> now you can undo it. There we go. There we go. That's one of them. That was a Ford one, which is a half inch. The other one's a bit bigger. Shoot, I guess that's going to be the 5 eighths. Again, that on there. Push. To relieve the tension and that should just pull right out like that. There you go. All right. Fuel lines disconnected. Do pay attention to where you set your fuel connectors at. Um, that's raw fuel. It goes directly into the injectors. You don't want to plug it up. So do try to keep them clean and tucked out of the way. Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah. Crunchy crunch. One upper radiator hose out. Next we're gonna take off all of our control cables here to go to the throttle body. That one's already unplugged. <laughs> or unclipped. Alright. Alright, to undo the throttle cables really easy. You go whoom, full send on that. Push the cable, give it some slack, and simply pull the retaining pin out of it, if you want to call it that. Go ahead and remove our brackets now. Hey, okay, cables have been removed, tucked out of the way. Put our screws back, because I know I'm going to lose these. Next thing, what I want to do right quick is I'll just simply pull off our breather tube here. Gonna disconnect our throttle position sensor now. Should be able to squeeze. Here, click and pull gently. Should come off very easily, fairly easily. <laughs> Next, we'll disconnect our auto control valve connector. Push here, nice and firm. That should just come right off. 
and the engine coolant temperature sensor. Same style plug, press, just come right off. Should come off fairly easily. Don't pull the wires now. <laughs> I've never made that mistake before. Now we're gonna disconnect our four injector harnesses. Just press and squeeze fairly easily. Famous last words, I know. Okay, fourth one's been undone. What this is basically accomplishing is getting the harness out of the way so we can pull the intake off when we're ready to get to that. Next, we're gonna unplug all of our spark plug wires on the left-hand side. All right. You can see what we're starting to do. That plastic intake's what we're after. Now we're starting to peel basically all the stuff away to actually pop it off. So we're getting there, we're getting there. Hang with me, people. We'll get through this. Now what we're going to do is basically remove, well, it's not basically, we are going to remove the alternator. First, we'll go ahead and get our bracket out of here first. By the right transmission settings. Haha, <laughs> it's the elusive 10 millimeter. Very good. I have one in stock. <laughs> Off the main charging wire. Oops, forgot my other 5 sixteenths. Oh, wrong way. All right. Simply put my screws back. I suggest you guys get into the habit of, if, if all possible and practical, put the screws back into their holes so you don't lose them. Right. To remove the serpentine drive belt, <laughs> I find it easier. It's gonna be easier if we just remove, un, or rather unbolt that coil pack and shove it out of the way so we can actually get to the belt tensioner. So there are two bolts that hold on that coil pack. One is right there. The other one is kind of hidden in the shadow. It's right over there. Gently pry on these ears. <laughs> yes, I've broken them off before myself, not in this car, but. All right, there we go. All right. Ah, one more wire to disconnect. No, I'm not the star of the show, but neither are you, you thin dangle light. To remove the drive accessory belt, otherwise known as the serpentine belt for us mere mortals. Half inch breaker bar, or half inch wrench with a pipe wrench, or a half inch wrench with a pipe wrench. Whew, can't say that again fast. Turn the bar from the passenger side to the driver's side. Oof. Oh wow, I'm gonna need a breaker bar just for that, yikes. Okay. <laughs> I have a four foot cheater bar on my breaker bar. Let's see if this works a little bit. That belt tensioner is pretty taut. There we go. Belt's loose. Um, oh my goodness, we got a problem here. Not a big one. Nothing that money won't fix. This belt's cooked. Ooh. There you go. In this particular car, you can remove the belt without wrapping it around the radiator fan. So with this belt, it's okay, it's okay. There's really not much by way of cracking or wearing going on so far. But when we come to this section, 
This belt is toast. It is. This thing was about ready to grenade. Which is why when we started up, it sounded so bad. So, the customer will be getting a new drive accessory belt. Which means I have to go to the parts store. No goody. Next, we'll go ahead and remove the alternator. One bolt here. One bolt over there. 10 millimeters, of course. Insert any, any 10 millimeter socket missing joke here and or wrench. And oh my goodness, it's gonna start raining. I may have to put you guys underneath the hood. Right. One bolt out. Okay. A few connectors to still need to get off here right quick. Alternator or Jenny out. Oh, I don't want to waste 200 pounds. Oh. So right underneath the alternator. Now we can see our little misfit hose has been misbehaving. There you go. Nice and cracked. Oh, isn't that just wonderful? By the looks of it, it's been leaking for a little while because that valley looks pretty moist. There's a lot of gunk down there. That's why we're removing the intake manifold to get to it. Next thing, we're going to disconnect the water temperature sensor. I know, it's got two of them. It's got one here, one on the other side of the engine. This, this particular vehicle uses two of them, not uncommon. So go ahead and disconnect our EGR solenoid wiring. There we go. And that's EGR wiring has been disconnected. Now we're going to disconnect our fuel injector electrical wiring harness. Squeeze and pull. Uh, these are pretty rudimentary, nothing terribly exciting about these. Go ahead and disconnect this guy too, because I know this is going to come off. And now there's clip here and clip here. We're actually going to physically take the wiring harness off of the... Now why did you guys do that? Okay, we'll disconnect our vacuum from our EGR port, from our EGR solenoid. This is the actual EGR up here. We'll disconnect that control vacuum lines. I think I'm just gonna pull all the vacuum lines off of here. Fortunately, everything's molded and whatnot, so usually this will go right back together. You don't have to label anything. So now the fuel, Electrical fuel rail on the right hand side is let me pull that out of the way enough like thus. <laughs> yeah, that hose has been on there for a little while. Okay, there we go, off. One potato. Believe it or not, we're almost there. Well, I was gonna continue to record, but apparently the leaf blowers are starting up. So I gotta wait for those guys to finish. Ah. So now I'm gonna to try to disconnect the EGR. Now, I gotta wait for those guys to get done. Arrgh! Oh look, they're finally done quick. You bloody... Oh, you... All right. So now we're gonna move the EGR ports. I'm hoping that they're not too... <laughs> so now, looking at our EGR, we need to remove our heat pipe out of the EGR. It's a stainless steel fitting, and I'm really hoping that it's... Uh, 
not too goobered up, I could just undo it because I don't have an EGR gasket. Of course, I'm going to the parts store anyway for a belt, so, uh, eh, oh well, we'll see what happens here. This nut is a over one inch or 22 millimeters. I don't know what size it really is, so I don't have anything that big in a wrench form right now, so let's go use the old crescent wrench and hopefully we don't snap anything. Come on, please, please, please. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Good deal. I was hoping because it's, it's stainless steel. You know, it should, in theory. Shouldn't give you too much guff, but pff, with my luck, I don't have luck. You kidding me? All right. All right, heat tube is uncoupled. We'll go ahead and start removing the intake bolts now. This rearmost intake manifold bolts on the driver's side, it's a bit funky to get to, but you can do it if you have a swivel, through H drive, small extension, you can actually get in there. All right, now this all should come out one piece, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> All right, so this is the hose in question. You can see it's got like a an AC crimp style hose on there. Turns into a steel tube. It reaches in the back, simply wraps around and comes out through there. Now, we can go about this a couple of ways. Well, you can see how much this tube costs because that's a special connector or we need to take this piece off anyways and see if that's a 5 8 nipple on this side because if that's 5 8 and that's 5 8 we're just going to slap a six inch tube on here probably and just call it good without buying the whole steel tubing if you're keeping up on your maintenance on your antifreeze this tube shouldn't be rotted out it looks a little bit fatigued right here. However, some people may not have access to that tube. I don't know how available it is. It might be readily available. I believe there is a bracket on the back side to get to that. And <laughs> it's kind of a jumbled mess to get back to there. So we'll see if we can be lazy and just see if we can just slap on some 5 8 hose, heater hose on there right quick. Well, I just got shut down due to weather. <laughs> oh yes, in the Northwest where weather changes every two minutes. <laughs> Looks like it's a mixture between snow and sleet. Ah, oh, love that for us. I guess I'll put the camera on the charger and come back uh, when weather conditions improve. <laughs> Ooh, it's a little swollen. Come on, come on. There we go. gonna do is I'm gonna lop it off here or here. Let me see that was plastic. I gotta see if this pipe's any good. Yeah it looks alright underneath. I don't see any rust. Yeah I can definitely use that. I'll just slice it off right here. Excellent. And before we get crazy, let's make sure this is 5 8 hose. How am I going to measure that? Just grab your 5 8 wrench. Yep. No slop whatsoever. Goes on perfectly. Same with the other side. It just fits. Excellent. <laughs>
are we looking for? Inches. Took seven inches to me. When you're working on old American cars, always have some 5.8 heater hose in stock. Hooey! There we go. In my case, I, I buy it in bulk. <laughs> right. That's there. Seven. Right here, good enough. Isn't this exciting? Well, that's not. Mutilate it. Yes. Devastate it. Perfect. If you're doing this mod, try not to bend this steel part of the hose back there too much. Try to keep it straight as you practically can. Oops. I forgot me hose clamps. One potato. Two potato. Three potato. Three of them. Count them with me. Okay. Scoop this forward. Okay. Fuzzy's down right quick. There's a hose barb on here, which is fine. There's just a long length of standard steel pipe on here. So what I'm doing is I'm putting two hose clamps down to make sure they don't separate. It's highly unlikely because this is bolted down here. This is secured through here, but I decided to put two on just, just in case. I think I'll do nicely. So a little bit less on installing the new ga intake gaskets. There are locating pins that come in the kit. They should come in the kit if you get the right quality kit. You gotta put them in here, two on each side. So four pins total, two on this gasket, two on this gasket. These help locate and keep the gaskets from sliding around when you actually put the manifold down. So our main intake manifold bolts holes are here, 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 and here, All right? Straight line. This guy here and this guy here is our locating pins. So to make sure we put the pins in the right spot, put the gasket down there. And then we'll put the pin in here. It's flush. Put the other pin in this guy, which is this hole here. Uh, the original Ford Gaskets did have locating pins. They were plastic, but they were there. All right. So now we have our locating pins in here. In here, I should just be able to plop this thing right on. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Excellent. There's a few different options. You can either be here or here, depending upon, I uh, guess, gear application. All right. So now we got a locator pin there. So now this thing should just clunk, clunk right in the place. Excellent. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Getting dizzy. All right, intake manifold torqued to specifications. I'm just gonna make sure we're not gonna torque this very much. Just, 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 just a scotch, just enough. Just a click, whatever the heck a click is. That's fine. Just 
cute little guy will go in here. Click. Good. And it goes in there. See, I've slept. This is tomorrow. And I'm trying to figure out what I did yesterday. Uh, <laughs> where? Where is my... No, for real, where? Yeah, 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 yeah. Aha, there it is. Found it. New drive accessory belt. Mm, isn't that posh? Certainly long enough. <laughs> Excellent. What I would suggest for the 4.6 owners is to load up your tension tensioner and then stick the rest of the belt. We almost have it on down between the idler and the tensioner, and that's how you get your air compressor pulley on. And please, for goodness sake, when you guys get done with this, verify that <laughs> everything's in the groove. Because if they are not, things can go poo-poo in a real hurry. <laughs> yep, everything seems to be all aligned. All the pulleys, seen, the belt seems to be fully seated. Excellent. There we go. All right. Tool tight. I gotta put my throttle bracket on. That was one of the first things I should, probably should have put back on, but oh well. You get the idea. For the three people that are left watching this. Hey guys, hey, how you guys doing? All y'alls are doing well. Oh yes. Again with the. Put the dar. Throttle return spring, of course. I believe this is for the cruise control. Everything actuates nicely. Always like to add a little bit of Earl to my O rings. So they slide in like butter. None of that margarine nonsense. No, no, nay, nay. It's got to be the real thing, people. Just like that. Don't forget your safety clips so they don't blow off. That would be a bad day. Let's see here. Go like that. Alright, safety clips are on. Spray this with a little bit of silicone. That golly gosh darn clamp can just slide right on there a little bit easier, eh? So what I like to do on some of these cars that don't have a traditional radiator cap is to fill it up directly through the radiator hose. Cool up, that is. It's whining at me now. <laughs> Take your medicine. That'd be the thermostat bleeding out the air. Now, I could actually take it off the thermostat and actually bleed it off in the intake manifold. It would be faster, but I'm just feeling too lazy.
Our <laughs> reservoir is finally overflowing. All right. Oh yeah. <laughs> Put a fuel really into the thing will start actually. So I taken that off. I almost put a full gallon into the system. I knew when I put only half of three quarters of a gallon in there and the reservoir was halfway up, I knew we were still extremely low on coolant because I can tell you that right there is worth more than one gallon. That's about at least two gallons worth. It's just we're learning where the engine's supposed to sit. That sounds pretty good. Well, it sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, do a ride along and make sure uh, nothing goes bonkers on us. Before we get to driving it, though, I want to give this thing a quick wash. Get one of those lovely car rides and wipe the dash pad down too while they're washing us down. I can't quite reach over there. Definitely needed a wash as we're doing, sure. better. It's 
kind of hoping that they would actually hit up the rims a little bit, but uh, oh well. Oh yes, it definitely cleaned up. Fantastic. Found out this car heater has only one setting, zero or high. <laughs> the customer didn't tell me to fix it, so we're not fixing it. We're just rolling with it. Oh yeah. Just wait till the very last second to cross the road. Brilliant. Ay, ay, ay. Maybe a little more bouncy than the 77 town car, but it's still, it's a good, it's a good uh, car to float over all the hot holes and roads that uh, our beautiful local governments never seem to maintain. <laughs> Don't get started on that subject. Let's face it, here, there, or anywhere, it's always a disaster, am I right? <laughs> The other reason why I'm test driving it is because the vehicle speed sensor, uh, also known as the VSS, went out on it and the customer put a new one in and I told him, well, I got an old standalone Garmin. I'll uh, match the uh, miles per hour with that on your speedometer because he was concerned about it being off by a fair bit. So far, it does seem that it's off about five miles an hour, meaning the speedometer is reading five miles per hour too slow. Or rather, no. Correction. The speedometer is reading five miles per hour faster than the actual. <laughs> that could be just due to different tire sizes. That would throw off, throw it off by at least two miles an hour. So I will address him. So I will address that with him when we return the car. But yeah, other than that, uh, I know there's a check engine light that's off on it right now, but it has flirted with the idea of coming on a few times. I did take a look. I think an O2 sensor might be going out on it. I might make a video of this, of that, but I'm not sure yet. It's a little bit too new school for what I want to do with this channel. I want to strictly fix the old stuff, but... But if it helps somebody, then. But if it helps somebody, then it helps somebody. <laughs> Is wrong with that thing. 
That is bizarre. Now doing these cables is really easy for the throttle control. You simply go wide open throttle. Undo. Don't slam this back. That bore is very precise. Don't be slamming that around. <laughs> it's a very precision piece of instrumentation. So there are two bolts that retain it. There are two 13 bolts. Where am I at? Oh, actually, I need to focus that with manual focus. So there are two bolts here. Right, let's try this all over again. Why not? So now we gotta remove the EGR heat sink tube. Heat sink tube. This nut is at least, that one focus. <laughs> well, this is supposed to be a quick two second clip. What? And now we have a draw. Draw. Of course it's dry. Really? I bet this thing's empty. Wonderful.